Hi, and welcome to episode number 22 of Overheard Orlando. While Halloween might be in the rearview mirror of what has been a hellish year, one of Halloween's hallmarks remains year-round inside of the vast majority of us, and that thing is fear. Today, we're going to talk about fear and have a couple of submissions from listeners. Stay tuned. Now, anyone who knows me knows that I am not one for the platitudes and the quotes and things like that. However, this episode will probably feature a couple of quotes just because fear can be such a difficult thing to kind of personify at times. So first, I will read a quote from the literary series Dune. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. So I think what's kind of important to take from that is that fear isn't like those Halloween imagery. It's not the mass murderer. It's not the ghost, at least not in the majority of cases. Most of our fear comes from within ourselves. It reflects a lot of times things that have never happened, things that don't exist, the future, things of that nature. For example, my biggest fear is the fear of being misunderstood. I find that oftentimes, even if I express myself quite eloquently or with, you know, very choosy about my words, sometimes my intent, sometimes the message gets misconstrued, it gets lost, it gets misinterpreted. So my fear is being misunderstood and not having that opportunity to express myself later on down the line. There's like 170 something thousand words in the English language and yet miscommunications, you know, misfires in speaking and communicating happen all the time. So that is actually one of my biggest fears and one of the things I think about the most when I'm trying to get my message across to someone is just it coming out the wrong way. So as you can see, that's not really a tangible fear. It's, it's something more internal. So next, I have my dear friend Marina, who's going to tell us a little bit about fear and her own fears. Hello, my name is Marina Bohorkas, and I believe fear stumps people from doing things that aren't real, from possibilities, things that potentially could or could not be. I feel that I try to keep myself from creating those boundaries, but find myself in them all the time. For example, I don't say things at times when I should because I fear being misinterpreted, but then I'm left with those unsaid words and feelings. I can't quite pinpoint what my biggest fear is, but the thing that I have been fearing the most as of lately, as a woman-loving woman, is the uncertainties of what life will be after having a difficult conversation with my highly religious Catholic Mexican father. I've struggled to have this conversation with him for far too long, and every time I gain the courage to drive out to my parents' home in Tampa and have the conversation, I just end up struggling to make it happen. I don't know if it's that I fear losing him or if I fear finding out who he really is or both or something else, but I do know that every time I think I'm ready to talk to him, I'm really not. The fear of the potential outcome of this conversation inhibits me from fostering what could be a healthy relationship. With that being said, fear to me is a mind game that we create and fully believe that will bring us harm and it will continue to keep us from so many what ifs. 
so many what ifs. And that's the thing here is that most of our fears, most of the time are what ifs, things that haven't even happened yet, things that might happen. I turn to a quote from philosopher Bertrand Russell of all forms of caution, caution and love is perhaps the most fatal to true happiness. Probably written about romantic love, very true in terms of romantic love, but this can also be taken to familial love or to friendly love in the sense that when we are afraid to voice things in these particular situations, oftentimes we find ourselves settling. Oftentimes we find ourselves with the person that we like instead of the person that we love. It's really easy to fall in love. It is really hard to be in love. But in terms of family, you have this situation where uh, Marina kind of talks about having these fears and not having this difficult conversation. And in doing so, she's potentially settling for a lesser version of what she could have with her father out of the fear that she may lose it all, which is a very real and valid fear to have. But until you take those risks, you just do not know. Now, the purpose of this episode is not some bullshit you know, crush your fears and everything's going to be great kind of episodes. It's kind of a think piece. It's kind of a examination of those fears that we all have inside of us and a reflection on what it means to have those fears. It's important that when you take on those fears that you're ready for it, because if the worst should happen, it pretty much just reinforces that fear. And the next time you try to take a risk, You may subconsciously remember the pain that you felt when you took that risk before you were ready. And readiness means accepting the consequences. And next, we'll hear from another dear friend of mine, Eileen, who is going to kind of touch on another family-related fear that she carries with her. Hi, Eileen. Um, Basically, one of my biggest fears is that I will not be there for the last moments that my loved one was around. I am afraid of like not seeing them within like the last week or something like that and not making time for them. And then by the time that they are, you know, gone, I regret all the time that I didn't spend with them, which will probably end up happening, but I try to, I guess, make up for it by being very mindful of, like, my parents' health and making sure, like, I go see them for every little special occasion that they want to see me and I can see them. And it's just added, like, it's just scary because I do live pretty far from them. Thankfully, they're all in good health, so I won't have to worry about that for the time being, but I do think about in the future, like, like, I should probably live closer to them so that I don't have to worry about things like this anymore. Um, But yeah. Such a good example of classic human fear, rationally irrational. Yes, she is fearing about something that is going to happen one day, but not necessarily something that should be at the forefront of her fear. I had a similar situation with my mother who, upon the passing of my grandmother, told me she wished she had done this or spent this time or perhaps not canceled X plan or Y. And I kind of came to the realization that when it comes to loved ones, there's never going to be enough time. And kind of like Eileen said, that feeling is almost unavoidable. There's always going to be more time we could have spent, more things we could have done. But it's important to kind of forgive yourself of that and to brace yourself for those feelings. I think that while these two examples are very similar thematically, they are kind of polar opposites in the sense that one is a fear of not doing enough, and the other is a fear of doing. So while people do have universal fears, like a fear of death, fear of pain, for the most part, the fears that we do have They take different shapes. What might be terrifying to you, to me, is something I don't even think twice about and vice versa. So if you take anything away from this episode, it's just to examine your fears and to kind of 
not let them become such a part of your way of thinking that you don't ever think about them. Just some reflection, you know, again, this is not a, you know, destroy your fears kind of thing. That quote I read earlier, I will permit it to pass over me and through me. There's no talk about destroying your fears, killing your fears, you know, to conquer your fear is to move in spite of it, not to rid yourself of it. One last quote here by Nelson Mandela, courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. So, like I said, my fear is misinterpretation, miscommunication. So I hope that I've been able to express this, the themes of this episode for your understanding. As usual, you can catch me on Instagram at Overheard Orlando Podcast, or you can email me at Overheard Orlando Podcast at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening. Stay true.